Hello, this is Marcus Giuliano. I am the chef and owner of Aroma Time Bistro, the Hudson Valley's first green certified restaurant. We're located 90 miles north of New York City in the beautiful Hudson Valley. And uh, today I'm going to talk about fish, Chilean sea bass. There's been a little confusion on Chilean sea bass. Um, and and it's, it's, I'm going to say this now, I'm going to say it again. It's a wonder that it's still being sold. It's a wonder that um, people, chefs are still buying it. And it's a wonder that, you know, that, that the seafood companies are still promoting this fish. Okay, there is, what's, what's happening with Chilean sea bass is, it's being overfished at an enormous rate and was being overfished at an enormous rate. Now it's a little more stringent, but there's still a lot of illegal fishing of it, uh, of it happening in the Antarctic. First of all, Chilean sea bass is not bass. It's called Patagonian toothfish. It's an ugly fish with these, like, these two, like, like, I guess, like, I don't know if they're like whiskers or something, but it's an ugly looking fish. It's not that attractive, okay? There was no market for this fish. So they put the word bass on it, and they do that with other things as well. They put that word bass on it, and it, it you know, it, it makes the fish more appealing because people can relate to bass. And uh, so Chilean sea bass is really Patagonian tooth fish. Um, it's fished down in the Antarctic. It's, you know, it, it, and uh, a lot of different countries do fish it down there. So, back in the late 90s, I signed what's called, what's called was take a pass, take a pass on Chilean sea bass. And I was one of the first chefs to actually sign, sign on board on that in the 90s. And basically, I had committed to not serving Chilean sea bass because of its uh, low population. The population is, is very low. And, and as a result of that population being low, certain whales feed off of Chilean sea bass. And there's their main food. So it's kind of throwing the whole thing out of whack. Now, first of all, Chilean sea bass is never found fresh or unfrozen, I should say. Um, those vessels go out for a month at a time, a couple months. Um, it all gets frozen on board, and then it gets shipped to its destination. And a lot of seafood vendors are selling, or grocery stores are selling, what's called refreshed. Refreshed is a term when you take something out of the freezer and let it thaw, and then put it in market for sale. So it's called refreshed. Okay, um, just the logistics of, of where the boats are and the shipping out of there, it's basically frozen right from the get-go. Um, caught as late as six months ago. Now, there's nothing really wrong with frozen fish, and I have a couple blogs on that, or at least one blog on that, if it's frozen right in this net. But don't you get misrepresented if somebody's misrepresented, oh, it's, this is fresh, never frozen Chilean sea bass. Chances are that's not happening. So, um, I, sign, I, I, I signed to take a pass in Chilean sea bass. Um, a lot of places, including Whole Foods, Cut it out. They took, they took, took it out, took, took it out, 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 out of their, uh, out of their retail cases, other stores. But back in the back, maybe five years ago, MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council, who goes around the world and certifies certain fisheries as sustainable. You know, my, the guide I like to use is a Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. That's my preference because it's an app on your phone, on your iPhone. You, we used to hand out the pocket cards here at the restaurant until the app came out on the iPhone. You can look through there and basically get a guide of what's going on. Um, so my, the um, Marine Stewardship Council certified one certain area down there. You know, one certain fishery, because, uh, you know, you, you, you can have, like, the, the, the salmon fisheries on the West Coast, and it goes from California all the way up into Alaska and into Russia and maybe back down. So just because it's wild Pacific salmon, there's certain parts of the, of, of the globe or the world or wherever it's in season over there, uh, fishing fish, that they manage it better or they fish in a different way or it's, uh, the populations are stronger. So you can't just say all of the Pacific salmon, wild salmon, is okay, because it's not. There's certain populations that are under collapse right now. There's certain populations that are thriving. So it's really careful to pay attention to that. So they went down to where they fish Chilean sea bass, and they deemed this one place as sustainable. So now it's a little confusing, because are you getting that exact fishery from where the Chilean sea bass is from. Now, salmon is, is great because salmon, if you, you really get like in depth of, this is Kodiak Island salmon, this is Copper River salmon, this is you know the Taku River salmon, this is Columbia River salmon, this is uh, uh, troll caught out of uh, off the north coast of California. Chilean sea bass, you never really see its destination. It's just Chilean sea bass. So where is your Chilean sea bass really coming from? We don't know, is it coming from this? fishery that, that's MSC certified. Now to be able to get a, a fishery or to be able to use the MSC logo because when boxes come in and cases come into a restaurant you'll see the little M I'll see that I'll see as a chef the MSC logo Marine Stewardship Council logo as it being certified. 
companies have to pay for that, and it's expensive because MSC is a, um, I'm not sure if they're for-profit or non-profit, but they charge for their services. So for somebody like me as a restaurant, if I wanted to put their logo on my, and use their words on my menu and saying, I'm serving Chilean sea bass that's MSC certified, I'd have to pay them 700, 1500. So I had talked to them at one point. It's, it's, a, it's a, 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 at least more than a thousand dollars a year just to use that logo. So are you actually getting stuff that's coming from that? Um, it, it, you know, it's it's really a tough a, a, a tough call, and most likely you're not because they're just talking about one little fishery out of all the all the production. New York Times wrote an article in 2008 about this. So now you can go into Whole Foods, who most people think is all oh, Whole Foods has great standards, which they do have better standards than a lot of other places. So the average consumer is going to walk into Whole Foods and say Chilean sea bass. See, it's MSC certified or it's certified sustainable. Whole Foods would serve it, then I can eat it, and if I see it at a restaurant, I can now have it because all of a sudden it is sustainable, or in our thought process, it's sustainable. Now, a long time ago, I raised my kids as vegetarians. Um, you know, I'm not opposed to eating meat, and I do consume meat, but honestly, for my kids, I didn't want to confuse them in the beginning. Well, you can have this grass-fed meat, but you can't have this McDonald's burger because to a you know, three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, they're saying meat's meat here. So if I go to you know, Johnny's house for dinner and they're serving hamburgers that are coming from the grocery store that are you know, with ammonia and coming from a feedlot riddled with hormones and antibiotics and who knows what else and E. coli, a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, or even an eight, nine, ten-year-old, they're not going to really know the difference. Well, mommy gives me grass-fed burgers at home, or mommy gives me burgers at home, and now I can, you know, I can't have a burger at my friend Johnny's house, and I'm having dinner there. So it's easier for me to raise my kids vegetarian, no meat. And once they understand, now you know they're nine and eleven, they understand more of you know grass-fed because they've been on farms. Um, versus feedlot beef and versus, you know, stuff that's in the grocery stores that's cheap because they've seen me do it, so they're in that environment. But at this point in their lives, they have no desire to eat beef or chicken or any of that, and, and which is great. But at some point when they do desire that, maybe later in life, they still have the education. Now, the problem with Chilean sea bass is you see it in Whole Foods, you see it in a restaurant, it's not the same thing, um, it's very confusing. Now people are going back to the bandwagon of, oh, Chilean sea bass is okay because it was in there. I'm going to make this statement again. I don't serve it. I won't cook it. I, I, I won't order it. Um, I, I don't endorse Chilean sea bass. It's not something that's too much confusion, too, too much, and a lot of other big chefs are up there with me on the same exact thought process. It's just too confusing. If you, if you want to do something that's sustainable, avoid Chilean sea bass altogether and mention to the restaurant, you know, if you want, because uh, that's how chefs find out. That's how I first found out about certain things. Customers told me, can you get me this? So you simply say to a restaurant, gee, you know, I'm a fish eater, but I don't eat fish that aren't sustainable. And unfortunately, you don't have enough selections for me tonight. Or I wish that the chef would have offered something else instead of Chilean sea bass because it isn't being endangered. That'll get back to the chef and that might click in the chef and might... A lot of chefs are stuck in their ways, but a lot of chefs that might, some certain chefs that might click and say, oh, when I talk to my vendor, what else can I order? So it's a matter of the consumer speaking up and just take a pass on Chilean sea bass. There's a great video out there. I'm going to try to link to here. I'm not sure if I can find it, but it was a little cartoon on it from um, Free Range Graphics. Let me see if I can find that on the internet and link it up to here. But uh, that was a cute little video. And that, that video is over 10 years old. So I'm Marcus Giuliano. Take a pass on Chilean sea bass.